Why? Okay, I wasn't hearing it. Yeah. Hi, welcome to the Margie and Lisa show. I'm Margie Wigan. This is my co-host Lisa Jackson. We're glad you could join us. And we have three segments. We're going to start off with something called the five love languages because it is Valentine's Day after all. <laughs> yeah. So it was interesting. I did not know about these five love languages. And the more I read about it, I thought it was, I mean, so valid um, to good relationships. But um, I'll let Margie talk about well, it no, because. I just mean, oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so in um, 1995 is when he wrote the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first, I think I was first aware of it from either Dr. Phil or Oprah because mm -hmm. I was home with kids and in the TV and they were talking about these five love languages. And I thought, what? That's just weird. Yeah. And then the more I heard about it, the more interested I was. And then Faith Church, where I go to church in Hopkinton, yep. had a whole sermon about it. Excellent. Yeah. And then there was some other place that it popped you, up. Yeah, you caught so, it. And it's something that, that's been really helpful, I think, um, for myself in relationship to family and coworkers and friends. As well and, and, yeah, and, yeah, and in love relationships. As yes. Well. So um, just briefly, <laughs> since um, the ones that I know of off the top of my head would be acts of service, yep. words of affirmation, yep. gifts, yep. physical touch, and quality time. Yep. So with the example that they gave in church was of, and this is Mike Lawrence is the lead pastor and that they have a little drama team. So the drama team came out and their example was that there was uh, someone who was sick in the hospital. Yeah. And so one of the friends went to her house and organized her spice rack. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> That's awesome. And another yeah. friend wrote her a card. Mm -hmm. Another friend went into the hospital and spent time with her. Yep. And another one, you know, I don't, I don't know what. But so the, the woman who was in the hospital said, you know what, that was so nice that you did that. But what I really appreciated was the person who came to visit me. Yeah. Because that, her love language was quality time. Right. So the person who did the act of service, the person who did the gifts of the card or whatever, yep. the person who did, you know, physical touch, I'm not sure was involved in this. this. But I mean, it can be. I mean, when you, when you touch, this, the, yeah. In this particular yeah, case, this, case, this yeah. woman felt loved mm -hmm. when someone spoke her love language. Sure. So even though these people were all showing love in a way they thought would be helpful and, and show their caring, right. she didn't feel that necessarily because that wasn't her. Thing. Yeah, and that's so interesting when thinking about that and just from a medical perspective, how people, you know, yes. touch. I used to touch my patients and just sure. the act of, and now it's a little awkward now, you know, like the situation. It's more but now, It's more. more sensitive, but I mean, that was a big piece I felt of healing, you know. And you can, you can read body language of what their love it's language is, yeah. and that's with children and, you know, family members and, and um people that you're in a physical relationship, um, men or women. But it's it's interesting, a lot of the language will show within how they react to it. I mean, that's what I right. thought was really interesting as I was reading about this. It, it, you know, like like for me, when I'm sick, I don't like anybody around me. Right. But I would love the spice cabinet organizing. Exactly, because that's someone doing, you're an active service person. Right. Right. And I have another friend who... Yeah is very warm and wonderful and, and loves to, to, you know, has lots of friends, but she doesn't necessarily like hugging. Right. She's right. just not, it's not her thing. Right. And you I know? guess that's probably part of the relationship is understanding that's what, what their their yeah. relationship is. And it's so funny, I Celia, Celia and I are going to Mexico to visit grandparents, but when I'm away, my the people that take care of my house always do something very nice for me above and beyond and taking yeah. care of the horses yeah. and to me that just fills my it's heart an act of service yeah right? i, I i'm always you. yeah it's yeah. so interesting you know it's it's it, it's yeah. good but go ahead well this what i was going to say was that i looked up um some more examples of this yeah and here this woman um wrote something on um you know online and she was talking about how with her husband or fiance, she was always giving little gifts and she was uh, thinking very thoughtfully yep. about what would really 
make him, you know, show her, her love her. for him. Yeah. And I think, you know, being Valentine's Day, a lot of people think about, you know, do we give cards? Do we give candy? Do right. We give, and for some people, that's like, okay, fine, thanks, whatever. Well, yeah. But her description was... <laughs> That she said, for years I've been giving my significant other small gifts to show I care, a lot of thought, love surprising him. She said she got a little angry when he'd receive them and say, oh, cool, thanks, and put it Sounds aside like, yeah. because his gifts is not, he right. doesn't care. Right, you know? I that's mean, how I am, it, which sounds horrible. But, but no, yeah. no, it isn't horrible, yeah. that's the point. It's, right. It wasn't meaningful to him. Right. So when you have that disconnect, kind of, and 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 the fiance or the other the person the gift receiver yes. understands that this is the way this in the person in, feels in the giver's language this means I really love you I right. thought a lot about you I came up with this and yep. I need a response yep. sh- you know showing that you get it right and that's so how you, they communicate that you know because exactly. that person felt like well giving gifts makes me feel good and exactly. that's my act of love or you know that's, so you must like gifts too because I like them right. that's what she's doing so. So what would happen was once she understood or he understood, yep. you know, gifting wasn't his love language, everything made sense. Right. She, this says she learned to show she cared in ways that, you know, were more meaningful to him. Right. So and then when she gives gifts, he understands that's her way of saying I love right. you. So, th- so that's what's really So it's interesting. That it. makes me think about when I was younger, yeah. when I used to always bake for people. And I realized that's what made me feel good about, like, giving stuff to people. Or, and then I realized... And you put time into yeah, it. Yeah, and so. most people didn't, you know, want the baked goods. So oh. I thought that was interesting. I mean, now everybody's on a diet or whatever, but I don't do it... I mean, that was my first line of defense when I was younger because I love to bake. And, right. you know, like, I'll, I'll give something to somebody. And, right. you know, and but it's interesting how yeah. you change because you realize some people, right. the person who gave me macho, I would send her... A goodie package, oh, and her and her yes. husband for sixteen years. I'd send them just when I thought about them, yeah. and they would be like, "Oh my God, this is so wonderful!" Right. You know, and then a neighbor, I know a soup she likes when she doesn't feel good, and things like that. But exactly. you have to realize you have to know who it applies what their to. Languages, right? So um, <laughs> Pat likes our our video, which I think just means the show. Thank and, you. And um, <laughs> and then John says, "Quality time with my sweetie works for us." Enjoying the show. Uh, Thanks, time. John. Yeah, so time. And for you also, yeah. baking something means an act of service and quality time. Right. Which is what John Chapman also said. Gary Chapman, don't say John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Gary good. Chapman also says, you know, that the author of the book, yeah. um, that there are kind of um, not dual, you can have more than one. Right. So there's a major, but then there's something that goes right. along with that. Right. So for you, putting your time and your love into making something yeah and then giving it as an act of service that's combining your quality time and your act of service well and people in my life um probably most people that i'm very close to want my time and i don't have a lot of time right so when i give it to them yeah like you know it makes me feel good because i'm like oh my god finally we get to spend time together but then also you know like it's it's an interesting thing. Time's very important to me, too, because when I go home to visit my right. family, I don't care what happens. I just want to be with them, yep. you know? So that was this, that's <laughs> another example was that this. she was saying that when she tried to talk to her brother on the phone, oh, yeah. he didn't really want to talk to the phone, my bro- yeah. and he didn't call her. I don't talk. Like, yeah. But yeah. in person, yep. he spent a lot of time talking mm-hmm. with her, and he'd say, you know, I really appreciate you talking with me, and I love you so much. So she realized he's words of affirmation. Right. So he needs right to feel that connection in the words. Right. But for him, it's a huge effort to make the phone right. call. But but also that that brings up another thing: your yeah. physical presence. Right. You know, like I I'm not a fan of phone calls myself because I spend a lot of time on the phone. Yes. But it's just you know, like I think that physical presence makes a huge difference because my family I don't talk to that much on the phone. Right. But when I go home to Idaho. I'm cooking, hanging out with them, playing with kids. So that's quality. my time is just I serve I, again acts of service. I cook yeah. for everybody. Yeah. I organize everything. Yeah, you know. But yeah. it's it's interesting that 
it's how some people think time is maybe writing a letter an email or whatever but for me it's more physical right. actual, it's phys- actual yeah. time with that person yeah because that's the quality part right you know it isn't just the time right it's actually the quality of that time so interesting so being and then then um physical touch again some people really want to have that right. hand held, always connected to that other person. Right. Whereas for someone else, it feels like, get off. Right. Why right. do you always want to touch me? <laughs> right. You know, so, right. so really. So Being you have sensitive to, to the person you're with. You, you know, have to and, learn that. Yeah. You know, what is valid or what feels loving to them. I'm laughing thinking about my one brother just loves to hug me. Like, he'll hug me and pick me up. And one brother, he's just like. Oh. Right. <laughs> it's not, that's not his thing. Right. right. So, so, and then, so we have to clearly, you know, if you, if you yeah, my a family, yeah, who don't. thinks a lot and you put all this time right. and love and then you give it to them, like my son, God bless him, you know, if I, whatever I do, you know, for, for um, stocking or right. for Christmas, whatever, it sits in the bag in his room because I put all these things and I'm thinking, oh, yeah, right. And he's like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And I get, you know, I get it. Right. And he knows what he but likes. But that's how you show your appreciation. Like, sometimes well, if you don't do it, then they're like, is something's it. wrong? Is that because <laughs> the way you communicate, you know? Right. It's, 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 a, it's so interesting when you think yeah. about how, I, I loved this one. Isn't I thought, it amazing? I'm so happy you brought it up it's as a subject because I'm like, this is so cool. Yeah. And yeah. the other thing is I have to say, again, the story in my life, my parents are 85 and 89. Right. <laughs> my mother has fought off cancer four times, oh, and I, I didn't swear that. a huge thing for her yeah. is my father's words of affirmation. Right, because they, they're, they, so, they, they're so they're so close. They are, but yeah. the thing is, he every day says, "You're so beautiful. You're doing oh. so much better. I love you so much." Oh, I believe him. And so every single day, it helps so heal she, her. She was, was lying there, 87 pounds, <gasps> looking dead. Oh. After she was recovering from cancer treatment, that was the ARCHOP procedure, and it was like or ARCHOP protocol, very yeah. serious, let's yeah. knock this out of her for good yeah. thing at 81 or 83. So she's lying there. But he would just, you know, show that so love. much. Yeah. Just the constant. And they're, they have the physical touch, too. They're often right. in hands. Or, right. That's how and they, they... And they do acts of service. Can, can I give you half of my food? Right. Kind of thing. And right. So... Um, I know for a fact that his words were heal like a her. lifeline to her. Right, help so her heal. So she really hung on his words in right. a way. You know, he was kind um, of her rock during that time. He and, was, and yeah, and that's she very special. Absolutely, you know. So and they're still so close, and I think she has been very good at. Um, you know, providing a framework for him, not words of affirmation back to him, unless right. it's the I love you. And I right. think there was one point in their in their early days that she had him promise that he had, they had to say I love you to each other every day oh. because I think words were so important to her. Right. You know, right. But, but they got it or he heard her. Right. And they've done this for each other. Right. You know, for, I don't know, they married That's, when, that's amazing, yeah. and it's so interesting looking at successful relationships. Right. People try to find the magic in it, and probably is just understanding what you need to do for each other. Because my daughter, like, I always do service for her, and she wants time. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll yes. make you some food, I'll yes. help you with this, I'll, yes. I'll do this. But, Mom, you know, I just want you to sit right. with me. and I, You, you know what right. I mean? So exactly. that's half of the understanding, yep. you know, like, because I'm... It's hard to, I think it's a balance fighting what you want to do and what you, how you show your love and making sure that that person that you're showing the love to, it's meaningful or, you know, and, and I think by listening to their signals is what makes it, makes it work. Right. Or as you said, the body language. Right. If you go to hug someone, they're kind of like, <laughs> right. and I think now, as you said, it's very difficult yeah, with, with to... all the Me Too and the sexual right. abuse. And, you and I'm a hugger. Careful. Like I like I'm to... a hugger too. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be careful right. because some people just aren't comfortable. So, right. so um, it's like a church when I'm greeting, some people want to hug and they're coming in for it. Right. You know? So you and know some that. People, yeah. I can tell they got their, they shift their book because I can, t- and they, I know they want right. a handshake. So right. I'm watching the sign. You know, where some people just want the word of affirmation. And, yeah. And, nice um, to see you today. I'm exactly. glad you're here. Right. Or, yeah. So you have to kind of be aware right. of what the other person needs. 
and, and it's and physical language respond. you know it's right. interesting i know we're talking about people but animals do that too exactly you know like my horses you know i can always tell you know like one of my horses when she sees me in the house she's she's like oh yeah you know what i mean so i know she's That's talking to you, you know what i mean so yeah. it's interesting macho was like that too you know like they want your attention and they'll they'll show you and if they don't want it they'll you yeah. know and i yeah. don't you know i don't think you know cats are notorious for being aloof say. and and some dogs are you know yeah. like sneer or they just fold up or right. or so whatever attention yeah. yeah so and and actually that does kind of relate to the the sexual abuse movement so if a woman doesn't want that right advance the man needs to get a clue and right. say oh she doesn't you know she's going like this right. when my arm is around her maybe that means right hello so that's interesting that uh, that jumps into another thought you know we t i teach cultural competency and, and there's a lot of sexual abuse training or sexual discrimination or se in, um, inappropriate behavior in a, in a workforce, but I think they do it so cut and dry that they need to do more of what we're talking about. Well, like, look at the, the language right. other than words. Right. You exactly. know what I mean? So let's look at, well, is the person turning away? Is the person shrugging? Or right. is, you know, when I teach cultural competency, I say, well, just look at their physical language. They may be saying one thing and meaning something else. I mean, mm -hmm. if they're moving closer to you, maybe they want you to touch them on the mm -hmm. shoulder and mm -hmm. reaffirm. Mm -hmm. Or if they're c tucking away, you give them or space. Turning. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I wonder if that would be a way to Might help. look at this, the Me Too movement, and, and realizing a way to to look at a different it's really a different form it's, of language it is a language right you know and, and being aware of it right and the other thing um speaking of of the workplace yep is if you're working with a boss or a co-worker yeah and you know if you're working in a boss a subordinate they, you need words of affirmation yes and you're working for someone who gives you like a watch after yeah. 15 years but they never said right. hey great job right you know or if you get um a bonus yeah. You know, but no one ever says, hey, I really liked your work on that project. Right. To me, that would mean this way more than I'm the saying. money anytime. So, yeah. so it really can apply in the workplace as well. Yes. Um, so you figure out what your coworkers need. Right. You know, if you're, if you're working hand in hand with someone, not literally, yeah. but if you have to do the same thing, right. you know, say, hey, I really liked how you right. handled that situation. Exactly. Or, you know, or... Um, or point out, can it, I get you yeah. a coffee? Right. You know, would be an act of service. Or, right. um, you know, can I do, help you with a bag? Or can yeah. I? Yeah, I mean, there's or a lot. I'm of... going to Dunkin' Donuts. You need <laughs> right. uh, anything. Um, or same thing. Right. But a quality time. You know, sometimes you can tell someone needs to talk. Right. You know, they just had whatever event. Yeah. And you just say, all right. Hey, well, you caught you it when I minute? walked in. Yeah. So right. it just, exactly. you know, and that's, I guess that's being sensitive of, of, your friends, your family, and the people you interact with, but it's just, it's, right. it's such a, it's a wonderful premise, and it. It, it makes so much sense, it and does. it really applies in so many parts and of life. And a lot of things, and the other, um, like, e even, um, even with a coworker, if they're, you know, upset or something, sometimes what I'll do is I'll say, do you need a hug? Yeah. I'm not just going to, sure, I'll ask say, her, do you need a hug? Right. Because, you and even know. that's a sign of respect, you may say no, but that, you know, that by asking that person, they can, right. no, but thank you for being here, or, you right. know, th something right. like that. Or someone could say, no, but can you just give me five minutes, I need to vent. Yeah, You know. right, so. right. But yeah, it's amazing. It is, thank you for introducing me to it, it's great, but... That's the end of this segment. Yep. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be back. To talk about Hopkinton Dining. Yes. <laughs> Downtown was... This week on Hopkinton Coffee Break, Patricia, Connie, and Dolly sit down with Arthur, and Meredith O'Brien. Uh, well, uh, Nancy Cleary, who is the publisher, she did a, uh, a feature story with one of the publications I wrote for, and I happened to see her profile, and... And I called her and I said, well, you were just profiled in the same same uh, publication where I run my columns. You wanted you interested in a, in a book of columns. And that's how it just started. Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Greedy, a family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits. And I'm here to tell you how it can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication 
or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance. In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness, and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. I get to find out more, go to massmed.org. Welcome back to the Margie and Lisa show, and we are in our second segment. We are gonna talk about places to eat in Hopkinton, and I have to start with my friend David Phillips at Hopkinton Gourmet um, has uh, obviously breakfast things. They also mm -hmm. have great sandwiches, yep. but today he said, and I wrote it down, he had Swiss chocolate almond coffee. Whoa. Oh yeah. Fancy. <laughs> Swiss chocolate almond coffee. And um, especially for Valentine's Day, yeah. you know, it's a little late, but often he'll have it as the special for the week oh. or however long until In it comes out. Of... So check that out if you haven't, um, if you feel like some yummy coffee in the morning, Hopkinton right. Gourmet. And um, the, the thing about his little establishment is he's very warm and welcoming. Yes. And he remembers what people drink, right. how much... You know, what, how many cream and sugar? I don't know how he does right. it. Well, it's funny. One day I met Randy there, and yeah. he's taken Celia there a bunch of times, and I don't drink coffee. so I'm, I don't either. Yeah, so I walk in, and he's like, oh, my God, you're Celia's mom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because Randy <laughs> yeah. brings Celia in there. Yeah. But he was, like, so yeah. in tune to that. So I yes. thought, and you know, I thought it was, it was it is very cozy. And yes. I like that it's close to the street. And, right. You know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a, yeah, it really is. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. they always have, like, um, you know, teenagers working there. And oh, they're absolutely. always so nice. And yep. I'd love to see that. And, and I, delicious muffins. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and pastries. pastries. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really a, a very nice. So it's a breakfast lunch. He, yeah. I think he Does he do his, lunch, too? Yeah, yeah. So he makes really good wraps. Ooh. A really good wraps. Excellent. And he often has um, spinach tomato mm. or, um, <laughs> what you know, plain. Um, but he'll put, I, the one of the ones I love is... Um, I think it's roast beef with pesto mayo. Ooh. No, it's turkey. Pepper turkey, pesto mayo Ooh. on um, a wrap with, I think it's some lettuce and tomato. Yeah, very. So oh, right, because he's yeah, pretty. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> um, awesome. yeah, so he, he does lunches. Yep. And, uh, and sometimes he does um, catering orders. And well, So anyway. It was funny. I was, you know, as you think about, you know, like our premises, like romantic places or, yeah, or yeah, places to yeah. go. And I, I kind of looked at it as age groups. So I was yes. thinking Snappy Dogs and Yogurt Beach oh, yeah. might be for high schoolers, which I kind of was laughing when I was like, well, what's Snappy Dogs and Yogurt Beach and, and stuff like that? But that might be like where kids go like after school or something to get a yeah, yogurt. Yeah, Snappy or, Dogs is at uh, Western Nurseries yeah, now. Is, yeah, so which I, is a bummer because when it was... They're trying to move back over, I think. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. CVS. But you're right. Yogurt Beach, a lot of kids go there. Right. My daughter works there. Oh, does she? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I knew because yep. of the... And, um, <laughs> and I hadn't even had Yogurt Beach because I was thinking of eating you know, food, like a meal kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. But you're right. You could go there. Right. Um, but I mean... Too bad we don't have a movie theater in town. You could have dinner, right. a movie, and then go out and Right, go out afterwards. Yeah. And, you know, but it was interesting. And then you think of the breakfast things, like you're right. just Hopkinton Gourmet, and kind of Bittersweet Cafe is kind yep. of breakfast -y. Yeah, so let's talk about what's in Bittersweet has yeah. for breakfast... It's healthy. Yeah, so they their little blurb from the Hopkinton Center for the Arts Dining Out Guide. Um, wide variety of local espresso, coffee tea, mm -hmm. various flavors of gelato and sorbetto, <laughs> as well as daily baked pastries, cakes, pies, cookies, offer in-house cold-pressed juices. Yeah. So they have a wide range, too. Right. And that's a neat. I love that location. It's a cute little. I love that. It's like an old. What's the date on the I, I 1910? Don't know. Yeah. Some older. And they have that. Whatever that pattern is on the yeah, it's like an Italian. Thing. Like if you go into yeah. the North End, yes. that's how a lot of not as much storefront. I mean, this is like, but it reminds me of the North End when I yeah, go in there. Yeah, yeah, I love it. You know, it's kind of and it's of got neat. a nice atmosphere. It's got that huge high ceiling. Yep. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's another option Push for breakfast. Close to, I like that you're close to the sidewalk. The, it's just like, it's kind town. of a neat. And then I thought it was interesting. Um, Angel's Garden Center, Red Barn showed uh, up. Do they have breakfast there? They do. Cause oh. Celia and I have stopped before and I, I don't eat a lot of pastries, but they actually make like an egg, bacon, oh. cheese muffin and a muffin thing. I'm like, oh, now yeah. we're talking. Hopkins and Gourmet does that too. Yeah. I yeah. So I was just like, that's so cool. You yep. know? And I, of course yeah, I like Angel's Garden Center anyway, but it just, I was like, that's oh, good. I didn't even think of that. But that's, I didn't either. I'd... So, like, when you think of, you may, you know, like, some friends, like, I think it'd be fun to get, go to breakfast or yep. go to go to coffee or, yep. you know, I mean, it's just that quality of time, like you exactly. were talking about. Doesn't Spend time. Have doesn't have to be dinner. What... And does... then the spoon right. has breakfast, lunch, and they have Friday dinner. I have n- I saw that. Yeah. I did not know that. I yeah. I haven't been to the spoon since they moved. Oh, it's nice. Is it? Very nice. It looks nice when I drive yeah. around. It's it. got huge there's a huge window all yeah, on the, the side, back which side. I love. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's where the booths are along that window. Ah. And then they have the counter. Nice. Um, yeah, which is they have ice cream. Well, that's the spoonery. That's right. around the corner. That's separate. Oh, okay. So the spoonery is around the back separate. And the spoon Almost like it was is, before. is a diner sort of style restaurant. Gotcha. Um, I have to go check it out. Amazing, delicious food, especially breakfast. Right. Things. I love breakfast. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, so those are the breakfast options. If you haven't taken your sweetie out, you can take her out in the morning for breakfast. <laughs> exactly. Or him or whatever. Um, and then um, Water Fresh, uh, I have Water Fresh as more of a right. picking up freshly made meals and going somewhere. It's not too but much of a dine-in. But you can also sit there because okay. Celia and I have gone there before and okay. you can, they have a couple seats. couple tables. Yeah, not a lot. And then during the summer, you can, of course, sit outside. Yeah. But it's it's it reminds me of going to, you know, like a farm stand or something like that, like in Concord or whatever. Yep. It's just our Hockington version of it. And it's, yeah. it's kind of neat, you know. It's yep. just... It, you know, when I, I we we brought up this subject, I'm like, it's such a great idea because we forget all of the wonderful places we have in town. Do we have somebody? Samantha says, number one, Cornell's. <laughs> number two, Snappy Dogs raised money for a second trailer. They'll be back in the center soon. I thought I had awesome. heard that. Awesome. And then Senior Center Lunch. Oh, my <gasps> gosh. $5 oh. on weekdays. Who knew? No kidding. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Samantha. I had no idea. That's awesome. Good to know. Thank you. Senior Center Lunch. Very yeah, good. Woo. Um, and then Cornell's, it's talking about Cornell's. Yeah. Irish pub, it said classic bar food, pizza burgers. Yep. They have St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Right. You know, in a couple of weeks. So that might and be. And it's a, kind of a fun, like, homey yep. place. It, yep. You know, it's the just, owners are always on site. But, right. Yeah. Right. But it's just like a downtown, or not downtown, other side of town, but. Everybody from town kind of always hangs out there. Right. It's like a Cheers of sorts. It is kind of like Cheers. You're <laughs> you know? right. You're so, right. Cornell's is like that. Yep. And then some other places, um, Dynasty is also like that. Yeah. If you go in the bar. Right. A bunch of people that are often there. Oh, yeah. Specializes in Chinese and Japanese cuisine, including chef's specials. And, and their sushi. They is, have gluten-free options. Yeah. Um, sushi, yep. Their yep. sushi is is amazing. It's really really good. Yeah, you know. So it's, it's just like know. yeah, it is good to know. Plus, you see people like yep. uh, the same characters. In, and some people, some people just come in to take out, you know, and you <laughs> right, wave. Right, right. But yeah, around the bar, a lot plus of the things. owner's Rosie is so oh, nice. She's so lovely. And, and it's so nice, and the yep. bartenders are nice, and yep. it's. Yeah, I love good. the dynasty. It's funny. Pan Thai. Yes. I've been to a couple times, and it's pretty, it's good. It's, I love that. That's one of my favorites. And it's beautiful inside. It is beautiful. You know? And, and the owners actually, um, the trans, mm-hmm. actually, um, I had Aaron and um, oh, our Oh, as par, students. The kids. Yes, as students. Aww. So so it's great to see them growing up, and the parents are so nice. That's awesome. And the food is amazing. Right. I think it's amazing. It's good. Well, yep. pe- yeah. Yep. And then Ko is another amazing. Yep. If you like sushi. But they also have some really kind of grill. upscale bar food. So it's, it's yep. like really, really good, they, too. They say sushi and grill, yep. which is Japanese but also Asian, yeah. which I think, you know, could be a variety of things. Sure. And then vegetarian friendly. So, yeah. but also, again, nice atmosphere. Yeah. Friendly people. Nice people. Nice bar area. And the tra- I mean, in a lot of these places, it's kind of nice. You can either sit at the bar or it's more casual. Or you right. can kind of sit off and, and kind of do your own thing. Yeah. And then, like, Bill's Pizza is a little bit like that. Bill's is Yeah, we have a couple pizzas. We have Bill's Hiller's Mar- Marathon. Yeah. 
Yep. And I haven't been to Marathon or, or Hillers, but like Bill's, <laughs> we go to there all the time. And I love the changes that they've made because right. it's like kind of adult. It used to kind of be a place where you took your kids, but it has kind of a mix of that now. Yeah, you can, the, the kid zone or the food zone right. is on the right side and it's kind of closed off and they have a high sort of wall, yeah. which is good because, uh, you know. The bar's right there yeah. and, and everybody's so, talking. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So it is a nice, and they have... And their food is great. Mm -hmm. Like, they have Greek food, but I mean, like, they have food that's healthy. Yep. They have a a good variety of food. Grilled chicken salad is awesome there. Yep. And the people that work there are so nice. I mean, they're always so nice. CJ behind the bar. Yeah. Jim says Bill's has the best gluten-free pizza. Yep. Uh, We talked about that a couple episodes ago. Which pizza was best in town. Yeah, and I loved knowing that there was a... a, I actually got to taste the gluten-free pizza at... I forget where it was, some school function, I think. It was really good. It is, Because the crust of a gluten-free can often taste too ricey. Right, and and sometimes soggy, but it's crispy. Yeah, so that was really good. So they do a good... Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Yep. And uh, so that's pizza. Grill 110, so we have a steakhouse, which is awesome. Yeah. That's kind of upscale. Yeah, they call themselves American. They have takeout. Oh, no, that's sorry. Like Capital Grill. I'm sorry, that was Bison Burger. Yeah, uh, 110, Modern American is what they call themselves. They also have gluten-free options. Yeah. And they're 1130 to 9. Yeah. And you can sit out in the summer, which is beautiful. Yeah, they go to 10 Friday, Saturday. No, Wednesday, Thursday till... 10 and then Friday, Saturday till 11. So they have a later option right. than, than some. And, the people and they have that wonderful, you're right, the little yeah. outside patio yeah. with the huge fire pit. Yeah. So even in colder days, you can yeah. be outside around that it's fire. It's big, but it has a bunch of different areas. So you have kind of high tops. Right. You have a bar. Giant and then you have like nice, booth. yeah, nice area to sit. And then you have the outside. So it has a right. lot of options. And again, the people... Yeah. Are so nice. I mean, we're so lucky, you know, to have the choices. Yeah, exactly. And they have um, one ten had a great. They do different. I think it's a monthly special. I don't ah. know, but I went in there and they had some kind of salmon something amazing. Yeah. And then it wasn't something that was normally on the menu. So they'll put so something in there. Specials. Yes, and it was really good. That's awesome. Yep. And then Quattro reminds me a little bit of yep. of Grill 110, too. And Quattro's nice, has a bar, and then it's kind of fancy on the yep. side. And, and they call they consider themselves modern Italian, oh, but they also have American. Is... They are 11.30 to 9 and 10 on Saturday. Gotcha. That's it for them. And then Bison Burgers next door, which Bison is Bison Burgers, kind of... the same kitchen as Quattro, the same owner. Oh, that's right, because yep. you can kind of walk yep. through. Yep. And I and love that's hamburgers. that's just American, they yep. said, 11.30 to 9. Yep. Yep. So it's just so interesting, but it just, if you guys have favorite restaurants, um, let us know, or you know any secrets. Oh, I thought Carboni's was interesting. Yep. Carboni. When we were talking about that you could order special things, and they might put your name on the menu. I know, that's cute. And, and they've been there since 1933. Carboni's has been? Yep. Wow. They are seafood, chicken, meat, pizza, sandwiches. Pasta. Wow. So they have a real, real variety. That's actually one of the first, when I first moved here. Right, us um, too. In 1986, I think it was. In that zone, yep. um, Carboni's was one of the only right. restaurants in town. Well, even so, when I moved here in 2000, it was one of the only. I yeah, mean, exactly. if you think about it, I mean, exactly. there's like TJ's and then there was Carboni's, right. but we didn't have. Right. They're, and they are so, they are so, the waitresses at Carboni's, very friendly. Have been there for a long time. Have been there for a long time. <laughs> the, you know, shrimp scampi. Yeah. That's like, yeah, Is that's that, where you I go. I haven't been there in a long um, time. I got to go back. Yeah, and there was some, um, there was something, they just have really good food all over the place. Yeah. And, um. It's it's a wonderful thing. That's excellent. So, but yeah, yeah I mean, we're so lucky. I mean, yeah. like it's people are like where to go in Hopkinton, and there's like so many amazing places, and you can yep. kind of pick and choose, yep. kind of what you want and mm-hmm. what the what things you're in the mood for. But yep. even as a romantic dinner, I mean, I think almost all of these could apply to different age groups or right, yeah, you know, whatever your your mood is for the evening. Right. You know, it can be kind of nice and upscale or yep. you can go to Snappy Dogs on the you know, go outside and right. stuff and like it's, that. And it's kind of there's something for everyone. Right. You know, and, and I, I'm so happy that um Yogurt Beach came in, yeah. for example. 
because that we were missing we kept that thinking, dessert. We need yogurt. You know, we need we had ice cream right down at the spoon. Right, but um, but the kids frozen love yogurt. It. Yeah, right. and then Marathon Pizza went in right next to it. Right, so that zone right there. You know, if you could just grab your dinner and your right. dessert. Yeah, um, right it's there. nice. And you see people in the summer, they sit down in the chairs. Yeah. And, and that's laugh not the... Greek. So that's the Italian style in the right. marathon. Oh, is it? Whereas um, Bill's, Bill's is a Greek, Greek pizza. Gotcha. So it's, and what's Hiller's like? It's two different pizzas on the same place. But it, but um, Hiller's is actually the brother of the marathon pizza guy. They both were Dino's pizza. Oh, And so I one brother you stayed about in it. that location and the other gotcha. brother went out and has the marathon, which used to be Vinny's. Right. Which used to be, you know, right. so it's just an But you know what I love that Hopkinton can support all these local families that right. own these businesses and, and yep. keep them going because I think it's 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 great. I mean, it, it gives us a lot of options because we live here and we have a lot of choices, but also right. it's it, a lot of these are pe- people that live locally and, yep. and work locally and care about our town and and want to, you know, provide yeah. a good service. Right. So it's, And the other, I think we need an Indian restaurant. <gasps> oh, we have have such Indian a food. great well, population of people right, from India with the now. Legacy Farms and Indian food is amazing. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I'm sure there's someone <laughs> that may be interested in bringing Indian here as well, well because Indian it should food be. Is, and I'm not sure where it would go. I think the uh, um, that what about brick, that new the brick box? Yeah, the, to the left of Yogurt Beach. I think the rent has been very high, which is why uh, a lot of people. Because no But that would be a perfect location, right? Because then you'd have parking. Kind of, right. So Back that's to the, parking the key issue. is to get um, yeah, get some parking parking in here so the people could actually utilize it and visit yeah. all these places exactly yeah. so it just but it's, it, it, we do have that that would add another dynamic because yeah, we have chinese we, we have um, thai thai yep we have italian we yep. have lots, Amer- three lots of american we have steak we yeah. have irish yeah oh right cornell's yeah, yeah. yep yeah. bison italian, burgers yeah, quattro- yeah, yeah i mean so we have like yeah. quite a so I mean, that was one Japanese thing. Japanese with the, with the sushi. Right. Yeah. But it, that was a big thing when um, Randy and I moved out here from Cambridge. Mm-hmm. We were like, oh, my God, you know, like, where are we going to go out to eat? What are we going to do? And, and look at what has happened over the last many right. years. Right. You know, and it'll be, it's nice to see that businesses are staying downtown. For a long time, businesses struggled. Mm-hmm. But it's nice to see that the restaurants are staying in place and people are going there. And, right. you know, and I hope after the show, people will think about, hey, you know, like, why, why am I driving to another city or well, town? I, think, and I, I feel like that's happening more. I think so, too. I know the owners of Pan Thai started with a restaurant in, um, in town, in Boston. And ah. they made a big jump. To come into, to Hopkinton. Yeah, to start a business there. Right. Which had been Main Street Specialties, you know, so it had been kind of oh, a, a little Oh, that's right, because it was place, two. Right? I forgot about and, that. Um, and then, uh, so they, they went in there and made an investment in the town, and I thank God, you know, right. people are going because it's it's so delicious. It is. And I think it's a nice option. It you know, is. To, to have something different. Um, well, and I think it's good for our children to see other, you know, learn about other food cultures because right. food is such a huge part of all cultures. Exactly. And I think that just kind of helps them broaden their horizons on what, yep. you know, what other cultures are out there right. and, and what, you know, and it makes you interested in reading about it. I went through a phase when I used to go out to eat. I learned, want to learn how to cook what it was. Right, you know, exactly. And when I traveled to India or, or Bhutan or whatever, I was always so interested in tasting the food. Yeah. You know, so it, it does, it's more than just food. Yeah. You know, I think it's a, it's a wonderful. So do you have a favorite of all these places or more than one favorite? Or? I like them. I mean, like, I like them all. There's some I obviously need to go to more. But, but I mean, I mean my favorites are probably to- Grill 110, because I love steak. I love Co. I love Bills. Um, I like Quattro. I haven't been to Cornell's in years. I go to Dynasty for sushi. So that's kind of... Now I want to go to Carboni's. I don't go to Pan Thai enough, because I love Thai food. So, you know, like, it's there's some stuff that I need yep. to... I used to go to Golden Spoon. So. Yep. And I think for and me... And how about you? For yeah. me, I think it's Pan Thai, number yes. one. I just... Love. Yeah, you love that flavor. I love, I do. Yeah. I think it's lemongrass or something. Oh, it sure. is, yeah. So good. So pan thai is really my favorite. And fish sauce, yeah. You know, and then everything else is kind of 
on the same plane. So Good. 110, Co, right. um, Carboni's, Cornell, you know, uh, Quattro, Weissenberg are all are good. Right. But Pantai for me, just right. my personal. That's, and um, that's, well, we recommend that you all go out and yeah. find your favorite restaurant. Yep. But um, that's the end of this segment. That's the end of this segment. And we'll be back with our third segment in a couple minutes. Yep. See you soon. Thank you. This week on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Poets, storytellers, and musicians perform and share their original works. It's a real fine night to howl. I'm out looking for some action. I'm not looking for romance. Something cheap and superficial. One night, no string circumstance. This week on HCAM, the Center School Reuse Advisory Team held their first public forum at the Senior Center. A community center. A community center. This would involve not only the young people, but the older people, the middle people. And that's, it would involve and be a lot of pride in the community. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, B. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This week on the Senior View, Ray McLeod talks to Gail Clifford and John Palmer again about all the monuments on the common. The brass, a bronze plaque. This was put in position at the end of August and the dedication was held at the Congregational Church across the street. And they would have held it on the common except that the weather was very bad. Okay. Welcome, Welcome back. back. We are very lucky to have with us Ritu Kapoor, Hello. who is a yoga practitioner. We're going to talk about how to de-stress in today's rushed world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and especially I think on a day like Valentine's Day, and I love the red, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. On a day like today, where you know people want to be relaxed and comfortable and um, not caught up in the gerbil wheel of life, as I call it. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to think about things like yoga and relaxation. Absolutely. So how did you start doing this work? So I became a yoga teacher about 10 years ago, and that's where my whole sort of journey of self-exploration and so many other things began. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of grateful that how it unfolded in my life and um, yoga kind of came to me. Uh, so what drew you to yoga? What what was the the draw to it? It just felt so good after taking a yoga class. I felt amazing. Um, so it inspired you. It to inspired me learn to learn more. more. So I did a because I concentrate. Course. So you have to really concentrate on exactly. what you do. You have to so you have to really shut everything else out and, exactly. and so concentrate was, on movements and your very body. De stressing. Mm -hmm. It helped you stretch and so it helped you both physically and mentally. And but after going home, I couldn't remember what we did, although I wanted to practice. Yep. Uh, so I went for an 80 hour teacher training, um, oh, yes. oh. which was meant just for myself. Mm -hmm. I had no plans to teach, yeah, yeah. but at the end of it, um, mm -hmm. I wanted to share. Right. And then I went back for a 200 hour training, uh, which was wonderful. So was um, that local or was it, did you travel for it, those trainings? Locally meaning in Massachusetts. Yes. yes. So it was. So it was um, really meant to be. It was meant yeah. to be. Was that, is that the Kripalu Center or where's? Um, no, it was. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't so, at Kripalu. So I remember you coming to Elmwood School <laughs> to do yoga with second grade or third yes, grade oh, I do. in uh, Mrs. Tengrady's class. And I have to tell you mm -hmm. that Mrs. Tengrady substitute taught recently and she had the class do yoga breathing oh my gosh. because there was a little bit of a higher energy in the room at the time yeah, that and she group. said we're all going to just do yoga breathing and then I did I that it. in the um, lunchroom one day just before I guess it was last week because it, again right. you know and they get Helps very loud escalate. at the end of 
of the uh, lunch time after they're finished eating. <laughs> so there's a 10, five minute noisy time. Because they're um, like, we got to be so quiet I, for two exactly, more hours. Exactly. So yeah. I said, all right, let's just do some yoga. I said, you can put your hands like this you know, if you like. Love you it. can put like this. Yeah. And we're going to, you know, breathe in. So it's, it, it, it really applies yeah. to many Absolutely. places in life. Absolutely. I'm, I'm so happy mm -hmm. that you still remember that. That was when Rohan was in yes. second or third grade. Well, Mrs. Tangrady. Third grade. Uh, it was third grade yep. because and now, Kernan was second grade for Molly. Now he's in tenth grade. So oh, yes, oh, wow. quite a few years ago. Yes. That's a long <laughs> yes. time ago. <gasps> yes. Well, that I mean, so, that is it's such a wonderful tool, you know, to help people all ages. Yeah, and I really. love teaching youngsters and teenagers. You know, a room full of bright young children, and yeah. they follow very well. And I've taught yoga to elderly. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm an occupational therapist, so when I was working at the nursing home, I would teach That's 80, awesome. 90 year olds. And I wouldn't right. say it's we're gonna do yoga. We, we would just breathe and right. stretch, and they were like, "Oh, that, that felt feels good." So what was that? <laughs> right. I know. And, yeah, and, that's, yeah. and that's often a really good idea because when someone hears yoga, they may have a, an idea of what skinny, lithe, young bodies in tights, right. and in and, and a person who's ninety in in an elder care facility may not realize right. that it's for them as well. Absolutely. Well, um, you, oh, it's very interesting you said that. I think that's what mm -hmm. commercialism of yoga has right. done yes. to create those pictures of Image perfect of it, yeah. images of people doing yoga. I mean, 30, 40 year old people tell me I'm not flexible enough, so I don't that's think I can saying. do yoga. You know? Well, it's interesting, and I'm an athlete, and I was I kind of poo poo yoga mm -hmm. for many years, but I use so many movements and the functionality and the breathing. So you can use principles. Yoga is a very broad Absolutely. discipline, you know, is probably the best way to say it because, you know, I, I went to a yoga class and I was laying still on the floor and I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this. But, you know, it was a different, you know, much like we were talking about love and relationships, you find the type of yoga. There's right. like so Hot many yoga types. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they're different. So I, I like to teach more gentle therapeutic styles of yoga. Mm -hmm. That blends in with my therapy background as yeah. well. It's more healing at so many levels. Yeah. I talk um, about yoga philosophy. Even in my one-hour classes, I pick a topic and we talk about that. Mm -hmm. So the fundamentals of yoga I always bring into my classes. So um, can you tell us just for a minute what that would sound like? What would the fundamentals of yoga philosophy sure. B. Right. So you, for brief... one, breathing is very important mm -hmm. in yoga. So mm -hmm. breath-centered yoga um, yeah. is very, you know, if you're not conscious about your breath when you're in a yoga class, you're not doing yoga. Mm -hmm. You're doing a great probably stretch or workout, um, which is great, but you're not doing yoga. Okay. Um, and I have hard time with power yoga, hot yogas as right. well, personally. Right. Uh, right. I, I don't do it, I don't teach it. And that's more about flexibility. It. Yes, it's, well, it's holding taught, and breathing. It's yeah. taught as a workout. And yeah. As it's, one of my yoga um, gurus has said, yoga is not a workout, it's right. a work in. Ah, so, ah that makes ooh, sense. So you yeah. bring your... Yeah, I have to remember <laughs> that one, that's a good one. So you bring your attention inward. Right. Uh, you have to be conscious of your breath, but you also have to be conscious about your mind. Right. Where the mind is. And that's what makes it so, you know, I myself have, because I like to work out per se, but that piece of yoga is, is probably the most profound thing that you can bring out, that it's beyond a workout. Right. It's, it's you're stretching, you're connecting with yourself, you're, right. Right. you're thinking inwardly, you know, on how Absolutely. to, you know, be in touch with your body. I think I mean, nowadays people yeah. don't move as much anymore. Right, but I think of our yoga, jobs or, yeah, yeah, just really yeah. brings out many movements that you don't do in other workout disciplines. Right, and it's right. and it's a meditation, is what you're right. saying. Yes. So, so yoga to... is a very deep philosophy. You know, yoga sutras. Um, you know, it would take somebody a long time to really read and understand, but yoga asana or the mm -hmm. physical practice that we do is a very tiny part of the whole yoga right. it it is meditation the end goal of yoga is to be in sadhana to be in meditation that meditative um state of mind mm -hmm. and that's I, oh. that's kind of the alpha wave right. state you know that so you can just you your can body is at rest right. your mind is at rest mm -hmm. 
and and you know sort of zoning out is another way of right. saying that but that's and it's an old old discipline when i thousands yeah of years thousands old. of years old i've spent a lot of time in india traveling it was interesting to see the gurus there and right. I, I couldn't you know i was young younger then i'm like how do they focus so much how do they right. and it's it's a it's a discipline it's, it's a, a discipline yeah, and it's it's a, it's a lifelong process yeah. or journey to for your, be able to yeah. stay focused even with our day-to-day -day struggles and mm -hmm. that's something you know margie and i had talked about to bring here how to de-stress. Right. And um, well, maybe with so that, can you yeah. show, can you tell us or show us a little brief window of maybe our listeners sure. or watchers yeah, could, could um, take away with them? And absolutely. So I would like to talk a little bit about sure, it please. first. Um, mm -hmm. So breath would be the part that helps you de-stress. Mm -hmm. It is, breath is the integral part of us, of yoga. Mm -hmm. um, breath is one thing that um, is our most... Uh, well, it's uh, always there. It's, it's always central. there. It's, it's just, it's, yeah. It's our, our companion from the very moment we are mm -hmm. born up mm -hmm. to the last mm -hmm. second of Well, our even lives, in disaster right? response, we I use think, it as a de-escalating tool right. or help, you know, because that's so connected mm -hmm. and that's something you can right. share, in a way, share with someone else. or Absolutely. Yeah, I them. like how you call it companion because yeah. it's just always it's with always us. It's always right. there with us. And yeah. it's such an easy tool to access because you don't need anything else, just you and your body. You can do it in traffic. You can do it. You can do yeah. it so many ways. Yeah. And um, breath is something that helps us connect the body and the mind. Mm -hmm. You know, we mm -hmm. all have a body and a mind. Mm -hmm. But we know how there's a disconnect there, right? Mm -hmm. Our physical bodies can be in one place and mind can be thousands of miles away. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, mind always like to travel. We, we think about the past, we worry about the future. Yeah. But breath is something that's always in the present moment. Mm -hmm. So when you really focus on the breath, you you are in that present moment. It You're not you in the be past or present. future. Yeah. And you that's bring that body and mind together at that moment. And that's how it becomes a meditative experience. Right. Well you almost take breaths for granted per se. We do. You know, you, know? you, you think about it and it's really something mm -hmm. that is another tool we have in our mm -hmm. toolkit to mm -hmm. kinda live life better and, and be you know, healthier. We, we don't have to think about breath. Most of us don't think right. about it because right. it just happens on its own, mm -hmm. um, fortunately. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> but what happens when the breath just happens? We only use one third of our lungs, the top right. third. Right. We never really access this, the middle and lower lobes of our right. lungs. When we take a deep breath, we really bring more oxygen into mm -hmm. our bodies and more oxygen makes us feel better. Into our um, bloodstream. So that's just a yeah. very superficial way um, to feel better when we take a deep breath. But mm -hmm. there's so many other ways we can access uh, different parts uh, of our body. Right. Uh, we can affect different um, physiological systems in our body through the breath. The heart rate goes down, the blood pressure goes down, it affects yeah. our digestive system, That's it affects our nervous system. I love so that. that actually makes sense with the movements as you're taking the breaths and utilizing those right. movements, you are conducting more oxygen to that area and you're, I mean, just right. from a physical aspect, but I mean, that makes so much sense, you know, right. and right. focusing on that, it really, I, in a way, it can probably help repair or you know from a therapy standpoint you can utilize those movements to make yourself feel better Absolutely. you have a soreness or mm -hmm. you know your body more, more oxygen helps you relax the muscles helps mm -hmm. everything when there's lack of oxygen the muscles tighten up right so that's that's just the physical body but when we take a deep breath, it affects the nervous system too. You know, grossly mm -hmm. speaking, our nervous system can be divided into sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic. So sympathetic is when, um, you know, easily described as fight or flight mechanism. Mm -hmm. You know, very important part of our body. We can't live without it. That's, that's what helps us protect. Uh, it's a reactive. It's, yes. Yeah. 
Um, but it's a reaction that was created in our body to run away from bears. But in modern life, if there's no bear, but we are staying in that we sympathetic that. response, yeah. Yeah. we are still releasing adrenaline in our body, those stress hormones, body thinking maybe there was some danger when there's no actual danger. So we apply that stress to other things that are not... It affects the digestive well, yeah, system. That sure. danger. It's, it's our crisis everything. response team in yeah. our very own body. <laughs> exactly. And uh, if your boss is not happy with you, yeah. your body goes, what? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So the other part of our nervous system is the parasympathetic, where we should be staying more often, the calming part of the nervous system. Yeah. And that part can be accessed via breath pretty easily, fairly easily. Gotcha. And the more we do deep breathing, there are many ways to do it, um, the more that part stays um, in very accessible mode for all of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we can work with that uh, when you can be very calm and still be very efficient in your work. You, we don't right. have to be releasing adrenaline to be very efficient or productive at work. Right. In fact, it becomes very non-productive. Exactly. Yeah. So it can give you ulcers and right. yeah. all kinds of... So long-term effects, uh, as sure. we know, are pretty... Um, can be pretty I yes, respond terrible. to disasters for a living, and it took me many years not to uh, have that. I find if I'm calmer and more deliberate and yes. just peaceful, I, I'm more effective. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So those are tools age has probably given me, mm -hmm. but that's something, you know, obviously yoga and the breathing can help you kind of take that energy and utilize it appropriately. Absolutely. You know, like, because I'm not in direct danger usually, but I'm coordinating things and mm -hmm. getting things done. So, but I, I used to kind of find it would wrap me up into a ball, and now mm -hmm. I get calmer. Because right. I find if I get wrapped up in a ball, <laughs> then you use too much energy. Exactly. And, and, and you're you not going to be effective because yeah, you're, you're not gonna, all right. up. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah. with teaching and all of that, and everybody's with life. any job. Right. Yeah. You yeah. you have that, and if you're using that that system where you're just burning too much energy, mm -hmm. you know. Well, and, even, and as a parent, it has helped. Oh, sure. Right? You know how stressful yeah. we get with little kids. and Right. Yeah. Teenagers and yeah, yeah, yeah. and stressed. Yes, and and I know um, there's an old thing, count to ten. Mm -hmm. But really, part of count to ten is you the know breath, taking a breath and breath. and focusing breath. on yep. calming yourself. Those mm -hmm. are the de-escalation um, techniques exactly, we use. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So so for people watching, um, just in the middle of a stressful situation, filling their belly would be. So how would you suggest? Is it okay to walk yes. through some deep sure, breathing? Sure, yes. Yes, um, please do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we have about two minutes. We have two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's do that. So if you want to close your eyes just for a few moments, mm -hmm. rest your hands on your knees, and just bring your attention around your nostrils and notice the next breath coming into your body. And then breathe out very slowly without any rush. And next time you breathe in, feel that breath coming in through your nostrils and let your chest expand a little bit. Let your shoulders open up. And this time, pause at the top of the breath just for a moment. And then slowly breathe out without any rush. And as you breathe out, feel the belly go in as the air leaves the body. And at the end of the exhale, Feel that little pause before the body needs another breath. And this time as you breathe in, just go a little deeper. Let your chest and belly expand as the air, oxygen enters the body. And pause at the top. Hold that big breath just for a moment. And then make this exhale very slow and steady. No rush at all. Just a few seconds left. Yep. So, but that is a perfect technique that yep. people can use to yep. and we thank you and so much yes. for sharing that brief little window Absolutely. into yeah. de-stressing in this crazy world. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Rita Kapoor, and we appreciate you joining us as well. We'll see you next week. Thank you.